Welcome to the Holy Land. In this video, we're going to see around 50 of the most important and outstanding biblical holy sites in Israel. See the Bible come to life as you walk in the footsteps of Jesus and see the places where the events of the Bible took place. The Bible is not a fairy tale that took place in a distant, unreal place. Instead, it took place in real time with real people in a real place. It's all true, and it strengthens our faith and understanding of the Bible tremendously as we see the context in which it took place. In order to see the holy sites in an organized way, we're going to divide the Holy Land into three sections. We'll first see the northern section, then the central section, and then the southern section. Now let's start with the northern section. The Sea of Galilee is breathtakingly precious. Jesus ministered around its shore around 50 to 70 percent of his ministry time on earth. It's a freshwater lake about eight miles wide by about 12 miles long and is located about 700 feet below sea level. It is the main freshwater source for much of Israel. Because of its location, storms can arise quickly and drop down onto its surface without much warning. It is about 70 miles north of Jerusalem and was located on the main crossroad of the known world during the time of Christ, which linked travel between the three continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe. Abraham entered the Promised Land through the gateway of the Sea of Galilee when he first journeyed from Ur of the Chaldeans. In Matthew 4, we find that Jesus established his home ministry base in the town of Capernaum, which is located on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, and at least six of the twelve disciples were from this region. These were Peter, Andrew, James, John, Matthew, and Philip. According to Acts 1, the rest of the disciples were from the Galilee area as well. Jesus calmed the sea here several times, and as a result, Jesus' disciples stood in awe and worshipped him. Christ fed 5,000 on its shores, 4,000 people on its shores, and this amount didn't even include the women and children who were present. Large multitudes of people followed Jesus here, which could have easily reached 15,000 people in size. Christ walked on the water here after calming a storm, and Christ did the majority of his miracles here in this region. Jesus performed every class of miracle to show that he was Lord of every aspect of creation. Throngs of people came to the Mount of Beatitudes, where Christ preached the Sermon on the Mount, which is his most famous and longest sermon preached. It has a spectacular view of the Sea of Galilee as its backdrop. In a place today called Kersey, Christ cast out a legion of demons from a demon-possessed man. These demons then entered into a herd of pigs, which ran down this steep bank and drowned in the Sea of Galilee. Along the seashore by the town of Capernaum, Christ preached the parables of the kingdom. And after performing countless miracles and preaching many times, Christ cursed the towns of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum for their unbelief in Christ and hardness of heart. Bethsaida was the hometown of Peter, Philip, and Andrew before they became disciples of Christ and moved to Capernaum. Mary Magdalene, from whom Christ cast out seven demons, was from the town of Magdala on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. Mary was a devout follower of Christ and deeply loved her Savior. She was present at Christ's crucifixion and the first woman Christ appeared to after his resurrection. Mount Arbel on the west side of the Sea of Galilee is the tallest mountain around this area. It has a spectacular view and is the believed place where Christ gave 
the Great Commission. After Christ's resurrection, he appeared to his disciples on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. He performed the miracle of the catching of fish, wherein the net was so full that they could not drag it up into the boat. Caesarea Philippi is the place where Peter's famous profession that Christ was the Messiah, the Son of the living God, took place. Matthew 16 says, Now when Jesus had come into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Caesarea Philippi was a place where worship of false gods and demons took place and was considered the gate to the underworld. Therefore, Christ took his disciples to this place to reveal to them that the church would be so powerful that the gates of hell would not be able to stand against it. In the northern part of Israel is where the tribe of Dan finally settled. Here is the location of their main city gate entrance. Later, the common phrase, from Dan to Beersheba, was used to speak of all Israel. The city of Dan is one of the places where Jeroboam set up an altar to a golden calf he made and forced the northern ten tribes of Israel to worship in Dan and in Bethel instead of going to the temple in Jerusalem. This major sin of idol worship was then followed by most of the succeeding kings of the northern tribes of Israel. It would eventually be a dominant sin that became the downfall of the northern ten tribes. In 722 BC, God allowed Syria to capture the northern tribes of Israel because they refused to turn from their idol worship after God had sent them prophet after prophet to warn them to turn from their sin and worship the only true and living God. The Jordan River is mentioned around 180 times in Scripture. It begins in the very northern part of Israel, then arrives at the Sea of Galilee, and then continues to the Dead Sea. It's the main river in Israel, and it's the place where Lot chose to dwell in the beautiful valley and watered plains of the Jordan. The Israelites crossed the Jordan River opposite Jericho on dry ground as God miraculously stopped the river flow as they entered the Promised Land. And Naaman the leper was healed in the Jordan River by the prophet Elisha, and a miracle performed by Elisha that made the head of an axe float was performed at the Jordan River. John the Baptist baptized in the Jordan River, and Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. Also, the disciples of Jesus baptized many in the Jordan River. The Jordan River was the source of life to the Israelites, and they were totally dependent upon God to send them rain to water their dry and thirsty land. The Israelites were a desert people and understood the importance of water. So when Christ said, I am the water of life, they fully understood what he meant by that statement. He was declaring that he was their existence and their life. Caesarea was built by Herod the Great around 25 years before the birth of Christ. It was the capital of Israel during the time of Christ and the Roman occupation of Israel. After the Apostle Paul received Christ, he was sent to Tarsus from this seaport. Cornelius, the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit, lived here as well. And Caesarea was the place where the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles, an amazing and monumental event. Philip the Evangelist lived here in Caesarea as well. 
The Apostle Paul stood trial here for his faith, and Paul was imprisoned here two years because of his faith. Then the Apostle Paul, after his two years of imprisonment here, sailed from here to Rome, where he stood trial for his faith. And King Herod Agrippa I, the son of Herod the Great, met his death here in Caesarea. On Mount Carmel is where the great showdown between Elijah the prophet and the 850 false prophets of Baal and Asherah happened. Elijah prayed and God performed an incredible miracle. God sent fire from heaven that burned up the sacrifice, the altar, the wood, the stones, and the water on and all around the altar. The fire licked up everything completely clean. Afterward, Elijah killed the 850 false prophets of Baal and Asherah. The Israelites then returned to the Lord as a result of this amazing miracle, and God blessed them again with rain and fruitfulness. The name Megiddo comes from two words, Har Megiddo, which means Armageddon. Today, this place is called Megiddo and is located in Israel's most fertile valley. More battles have been fought here than in any other place in the world. For this reason, Solomon fortified this city and used it as a fort of protection. Also, many other kings used Megiddo as a fort in order to control a major travel and trade route here called the Via Maris or the Way of the Sea. This route linked Africa with Asia and Europe. After King Solomon, King Ahab built a water tunnel down to its water source so attacking armies couldn't cut off their water source. Part of the last battle of Armageddon, which takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation period, will be fought here and in Jerusalem in what appears to be a simultaneous battle. Nazareth is estimated to have had a population during the time of Christ of around 300 to 500 people. Nazareth was the hometown of Joseph and Mary and the place where the angel Gabriel was sent to announce to the Virgin Mary that she would be the mother of Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah. After living in Egypt for some time after Christ's birth, his parents returned to Nazareth, where Jesus grew up. Jesus lived in Nazareth until he started his earthly ministry at the age of 30. From Nazareth, Christ relocated and set up his ministry home base in Capernaum. Matthew 4.13 says, And leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun, and Naphtali. Sadly, those who knew Christ the best rejected him and attempted to throw him off a cliff close by to their town. And you can see in this video this rocky point from which they attempted to throw him off and kill him. However, scripture says he passed through their midst and continued on from Nazareth. Today, there is a church in Nazareth called the Church of the Annunciation, which is located on the believed home where Mary received the message from the angel Gabriel that she would be the mother of Christ, the Messiah. Cana is close by to Nazareth and is the place Jesus performed his first public miracle by changing water into wine. Jesus also healed an official son here in Cana and Nathaniel, one of the close followers of Christ and close friend or possibly brother of the Apostle Philip, was from Cana. The Apostle Philip led Nathaniel, who was from Cana, to Christ. There is a church here today called the Wedding Church, marking the place where the miracle of Christ turning the water into wine took place. Mount Tabor, 
rising like a dome from the plain of Jezreel, some 1,500 feet above the valley floor, is the mountain where Christian tradition places the transfiguration of Christ. Matthew 17 says, And after six days Christ took with him Peter and James and John his brother and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. There is a church located on top of the mountain where it is believed Christ was transfigured. This spring, called Gideon Spring, is the place where God led Gideon to choose 300 men out of 32,000 to fight a miraculous battle to free the Israelites from the oppressive control of the Midianites. Judges 7 says, So he, being Gideon, brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall set by himself. Likewise, everyone who kneels down to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hands to their mouths, was three hundred men. But all of the rest of the people knelt down to drink. And the Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men who lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand. Bethshean was one of the key Decapolis cities of the Roman Empire during the time of Christ. Much earlier than Christ's day, because of Saul's persistent disobedience to God and his continual abuse of presuming upon God's grace, God allowed him to be killed in battle and his body was hung on the hill here overlooking Bethshean. There is a marker you can see on the hillside that supposedly commemorates this event. The upper mound is the old city of Saul's time, and the ruins below are from Christ's time. Now let's look at the central section of Israel. Upon entering the Promised Land, Abraham first reared an altar here to the Lord in Shechem. It was here that Jacob came and settled after his meeting with his estranged brother Esau upon his return from Padam Aram. Dinah's defilement also took place here in Shechem, and it was in Shechem that Jacob buried his foreign gods and committed himself fully to the true and living God of his forefathers. To the rich pasture land near Shechem, Joseph came to seek his brethren and was sold into slavery and taken to Egypt right here close by to Shechem. And it was in Shechem, which lies between the two famous mountains of Mount Ebal and Mount Gerasim, that Moses commanded the Israelites, once they had entered the Promised Land, to pronounce the blessings of God for their obedience to him and the curses of God for their disobedience to him. When his end was approaching, Joshua gathered the tribes of Israel here and addressed to them his final words of counsel and exhortation. After Joshua and the Israelites had conquered the Promised Land, Joseph's bones were buried in the parcel of ground in Shechem which Jacob had bought. And you can see here this tomb where Joseph's bones were placed. Shechem, called Sychar in John chapter 4, is the place Jesus met the woman at the well and conversed with her. So right here you can see the well where Jesus would have been. Gilgal is located close by to Jericho and is the place the Israelites first camped after crossing the Jordan and entering the Promised Land. And it became a central camp and meeting place of the Israelites throughout much of their history. It's also the place where Joshua erected 12 stones 
taken from the Jordan River when they crossed it, and a monument was erected so their children after them would have a site of remembrance. And Gilgal was the first place the Israelites celebrated the Passover after entering the Promised Land. It was at Gilgal that the Gibeonites tricked the Israelites into making a covenant with them so they would survive. Gilgal was the place from which faithful Caleb, one of the two faithful spies Moses sent to spy out the promised land, asked Joshua for his portion of land. The prophet Samuel visited and taught the word of God regularly in Gilgal, and Saul, the first king of Israel, was made king here at Gilgal. Unfortunately, King Saul's reign over Israel also came to an end here in Gilgal because of his disobedience. And God pronounced judgment upon Israel here at Gilgal because of their disobedience to him. Legend holds that the founder of Joppa, also called Jaffa, was Japheth, one of Noah's sons. Joppa was the main seaport and entry gate to Israel for thousands of years until just before the time of Christ when Herod the Great built another seaport at Caesarea about 35 miles north of here. The seaport of Joppa is where the trees of Lebanon arrived that Solomon used to build the temple in Jerusalem around 950 BC. And Joppa was the seaport from which King Solomon's ships came and went on their journeys around the known world at that time. Joppa was the seaport where the logs once again arrived for rebuilding the second temple that the priest Ezra oversaw after the return of the Israelites from their deportations in about 520 BC. And Joppa was the seaport from which Jonah sailed when he attempted to disobey the Lord's calling and flee to Tarshish rather than preach a message of repentance to the Ninevites. In the New Testament, we find that Joppa was the place a famous woman named Dorcas lived and was raised from the dead by the Apostle Peter. Simon the Tanner lived here in Joppa as well, and it was the place the Apostle Peter was staying when he received the vision to take the gospel to the Gentiles about 35 miles north of here to the city of Caesarea. Shiloh, located in the territory of Ephraim, played a key role in Israel's history and was the place where the temple resided for around 369 years. Here, territory was allotted to the seven tribes who had not yet received their portions under Joshua. In Shiloh, Israel assembled under Joshua at the close of the War of Conquest as found in Joshua 18. And here Joshua gave his last words to the Israelites before his death. In Shiloh, the Levites were assigned their cities in the territories of the various tribes as recounted in Joshua 18. The maids of Shiloh were captured by the Benjaminites on the occasion of a feast while dancing in the vineyards. This, having been planned by the other tribes to provide the Benjaminites with wives because of their disobedience and judgment as found in Judges 21. At Shiloh, Hannah prayed for a son and God heard her prayers and blessed her with Samuel. And to Shiloh, Hannah brought Samuel and consecrated him to God's service as found in 1 Samuel 1. And it's the place that the great prophet Samuel then grew up. The sanctuary was presided over Eli and his wicked sons, and through Samuel, the doom of their house was pronounced. The capture of the ark by the Philistines, the fall of Hophni and Phinehas, and the death of the aged priest Eli and his daughter-in-law happened here in Shiloh as found in 1 Samuel 3. The sanctuary in Shiloh was called a temple as noted in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 3 and had doorposts and doors. It was therefore a more durable structure than the old tent. It appears to have been destroyed probably by the Philistines sometime later on as found in 1 Samuel 22. 
Close by to Ai, the Lord appeared to Abraham as he was traversing the promised land. And as a result, Abraham built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord here. Ai is the second town Joshua and the Israelites conquered after they entered the promised land. It was a small town compared to Jericho, but because of a sin among one member of the Israelites, Joshua and the Israelites had a hard time conquering this city and were taught a major lesson about how God feels about sin in the midst of his people. Mizpah is first mentioned in Genesis 31, where Jacob and Laban made a covenant wherein Jacob promised Laban that he would take care of his daughters and grandchildren. The city of Mizpah was established as an important site early in the history of Israel in the time period of the judges. And Mizpah was used as a national rallying point for a man of the Levites who asked for national justice at the end of the time period of the judges when his concubine was raped and killed by several members of the Benjaminite tribe. Samuel judged the nation from Mizpah and held national gatherings at the city. And Israel's first king, Saul, was presented to the nation at Mizpah. In Michmash, Jonathan, the son of King Saul, exercised great faith and courage as he began a significant victory over the army of the Philistines. 1 Samuel 14 says, Between the two passes by which Jonathan sought to cross over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp crag on the one side and a sharp crag on the other side. And you can see these two crags here in this video. Jonathan loved God deeply and humbly submitted himself to the will of God, even when it meant giving up his future kingdom. He didn't pursue his own interest, but those of God's. Jericho claims to be the oldest existing city in the world and is called the City of Palms. Rahab the prostitute who hid the Israelite spies was from here, and the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River not far from here. It was the first city captured by the Israelites as they entered the Promised Land, and the amazing miracle of the sun standing still for a day where Joshua and the Israelite army took place not far from Jericho. The prophets Elijah and Elisha traversed here often, and Elisha the prophet healed the water source here in Jericho. The miracle of a blind man healed by Jesus also occurred here. And Zacchaeus the tax collector was from Jericho as well. At this location of the Jordan River is the traditional site where it's believed John the Baptist baptized many people and the place where Jesus was baptized by John. Today, many people come here to be baptized in the Jordan River, just like Christ was. The story of the Good Samaritan took place on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. St. George's Monastery commemorates part of this story. It's also the believed place where God supernaturally fed the prophet Elijah by ravens, there is a cave here commemorating this event. This site is just five miles west of Jericho in a deep gorge called Wadi Kelt. This well-traveled road was used regularly by Jesus and multitudes of Jews as they made their pilgrimages to and from Jerusalem. It begins at Jericho and climbs up to Jerusalem. It has an elevation rise of about 3,500 feet within 20 miles, so it was a very steep grade. It was a dangerous road that was desolate, curvy, and had crooks and crannies where bandits and robbers could hide out and get away easily in the desert where there was very little police protection. Another site marking the story of the Good Samaritan is this place called the Inn of the Good Samaritan. It's located about halfway between Jerusalem 
and Jericho. Christ used this road as the setting for the story of the Good Samaritan to teach us who our neighbor is. The Good Samaritan and the Samaritans were considered sinful and unclean by the Jews, helped out a fellow traveler who both a priest and Levite failed to do. In the Judean desert area is where John the Baptist lived and ministered as an adult. Multitudes came to him to be baptized for the repentance of their sins in the Jordan River in this area. It's also the place where Jesus was tempted for 40 days and nights after his baptism. Gibeon is located about six miles northwest of Jerusalem. Its name means hill city. Today it's known as Navi Samuel. Just below this high place is the ancient city of Gibeon, close to the town today known as Al-Hib. It was a high place of worship throughout much of Israel's history, and the tabernacle was located here during the times of King David and King Solomon. The tomb of the prophet Samuel is believed to be located here inside the Jewish synagogue. Today there is a mosque here that is built upon the ruins of a crusader church, which was built upon the ruins of a Byzantine church, which is built upon where the tabernacle was once located during the reigns of King David and King Solomon. It has a spectacular view and you can see Jerusalem and the Mount of Olives from here. This is the amazing place where Joshua prayed that the sun would stand still and God heard and answered his prayer. This ancient city is named after the Gibeonites who tricked Joshua into making a treaty with them. The Gibeonites succeeded in the treaty because Joshua failed to pray to the Lord about them. It was at Gibeon the tabernacle was set up during the reigns of David and Solomon. Soon after Solomon came to the throne, he paid a visit to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, and the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and gave him supernatural wisdom, wealth, and power to lead his people. After Solomon built the temple, all the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon and brought from Gibeon the tabernacle and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle to Jerusalem. Jerusalem plays a major role in the life and history of Israel. In a unique way, Jerusalem is the special dwelling place of God on this earth. Psalm 132 says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. For this reason, We'll be looking at several key places where important events happened here in Jerusalem. It was in Jerusalem that Abraham was to offer Isaac, his firstborn son, to God on the very place the temple of God would later be built by King Solomon. Jerusalem was partially conquered by the Israelites as they entered the Promised Land, but not completely. Jerusalem was later fully conquered by King David and he purchased the original Temple Mount in Jerusalem when it was just a threshing floor in order to build an altar there to the Lord. Afterward, King David set up his throne in Jerusalem and it became the ruling center of Israel from then on. King Solomon then built the temple in 960 BC on the exact location where Abraham was going to offer Isaac and the very threshing floor that King David had purchased. And at the dedication of the temple Solomon built, the temple was so filled with the glory of God that the priest had to withdraw and suspend their dedication service. Jerusalem then became the center of worship in Israel. The kings of Israel reigned from here. The prophets of Israel spoke and ministered here. However, the first temple built by Solomon was destroyed in 586 BC by the Babylonians because of God's judgment on Israel for their disobedience to him. 
The second temple under Ezra was rebuilt in 538 BC, and around the same time, Nehemiah rebuilt the city walls here. The temple was refurbished by King Herod from 37 BC to 4 AD as well, and was made more beautiful than any temple before it. It was this temple built by Herod where Christ and the disciples would minister on a regular basis. Christ died on the cross here in Jerusalem, and Christ ascended to heaven from here in Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit happened here, and the early church was born in Jerusalem. Stephen was martyred here close by as recounted in Acts 7 as well. Unfortunately, Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans as a result of Christ's judgment on it for the Jews' rejection of him as their Messiah. It was later conquered by Muslims in 636 AD, and the Dome of the Rock was then built on its site in 691 AD. The Mountain of Olives is an extremely important place located just opposite of the Temple Mount on the east side of Old Jerusalem. The destruction of Jerusalem and future events was foretold by Christ from the Mount of Olives as found in Matthew 24. On top of the Mount of Olives is the place from which Christ ascended back to heaven. It's also the place to which Christ, all the angels, and all believers will return to when Christ comes back in power and great glory at the end of the Great Tribulation period. Zechariah 14.4 says, On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem to the east. Marking the place where Christ ascended back to heaven from, and the place to which he will return to at his second coming, is the Chapel of the Ascension. The triumphal entry is located on the side of the Mount of Olives and is the path Jesus used at his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. The Garden of Gethsemane is located at the base of the Mount of Olives and is the place to which Christ went to pray and his sweat became like drops of blood. And it's the place he was arrested at just before his crucifixion. On the side of the Mount of Olives is a church commemorating the life of Mary Magdalene from whom Christ cast out seven demons. A church called Dominus Flevit, which means Christ wept in Latin, marks the spot where Christ wept over Jerusalem during the triumphal entry because he knew they would reject him and be destroyed as a result in 70 AD. The Valley of Jehoshaphat, or also called the Kidron Valley, is the place where the unbelieving nations will be gathered at the end of the Great Tribulation in the wine press of Christ to be judged. The blood will come up to a horse's bridle and will run from this place for a distance of about 180 miles to the Red Sea. The Eastern Gate, or also called the Golden Gate or Beautiful Gate, was one of the most used gates for entering onto the Temple Mount area. It is the gate that Christ would have entered and exited through repeatedly. It's also the gate Peter and John entered through to heal a lame man as found in Acts 3.2. The Temple Mount area is the location where the original temple was and is the place where the early church gathered and met at for many years. The Western Wall is considered the most holy site in Jerusalem for the Jews. It is part of the original wall that Herod the Great built just before Christ's time. Today, it's the closest large meeting area the Jews can get to the original temple that existed in Christ's time because they are not really allowed upon the Temple Mount for political reasons. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the traditional site where it's believed Christ was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. It was built by Constantine's mother, Helena, in 326 
A.D. There's another place called the Garden Tomb that is considered an option where Christ was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. Close by, there is an interesting rock formation that looks like a skull, which could have been Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Today, many Christians visit this site because it's a beautiful place to reflect and meditate upon what Christ did for us. It has an empty tomb for all to see. In Old City, Jerusalem, is the Via Dolorosa, which means the painful path. It has 14 stations marking biblical and traditional events that happened to Christ as he carried his cross to be crucified. It is a highly visited route today. In Old Jerusalem is the Pool of Bethesda. It's the place where Christ healed a man who had been sick with some kind of infirmity for 38 years. There was another important pool in Old Jerusalem called the Pool of Siloam. Here, there was a blind man that Christ healed by anointing his eyes with mud he had made with dirt and his saliva. Afterward, Christ told him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. During Christ's time, the pool of Siloam was large and was used for ritual purification purposes before the Jews entered the Temple Mount area. The upper room marks the traditional site where it's believed Christ ate the Last Supper with his disciples before his crucifixion. It's also likely that Pentecost started here and then moved to the Southern Stair area by the Temple Mount. The house of Caiaphas is the place where Christ was condemned to crucifixion by the high priest and the Jews. It's also where Peter denied Christ three times before the rooster crowed. It's also where Christ likely spent the night in a wet cistern awaiting his trial before Pilate. The next day he was led up these stairs on his way to be tried and condemned to death by crucifixion. The southern stairs leading up to the temple area were also known as the rabbi's stairs. It's extremely certain that Christ taught his disciples on these very stairs. It's also very likely that Pentecost took place here or ended up here afterwards as it was a main entrance to the temple area and had many mitzvahs, also known as purification water pools, that were likely used for the 3,000 who were saved after Peter preached. The city of David is located just south of the Temple Mount on a plateau ridge. It's where all the history of Jerusalem began and the beginning place where God would do so much to speak to the world about himself. It has been the most excavated site in Israel over the past 150 years. It was 3,000 years ago that King David made the city of David, also known as Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Before David, it was Abraham who would traverse here when he met the king of Salem, who was called Melchizedek. The city of David had an amazing source of fresh water known as the Gihon Spring. The city of David is also referred to as Zion in scripture. Before King David conquered this site, it was known as the city of Jebus. David built houses for himself and prepared a place for the Ark of the Covenant in the city of David. King Solomon was anointed as king at the Gihon Spring in the city of David. After David built his palace and much of the city of David, his son Solomon built the temple just north of the city of David, up the hill just a bit. Later, King Hezekiah built a tunnel to divert the water from the Gihon Spring, which was the city's water source, down to the Pool of Siloam in order to keep the water inside the city walls so warring armies like the Assyrians couldn't shut off the water to the city. 
Close by to Jerusalem is the town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. Joseph's wife Rachel was buried in Bethlehem. Naomi was from Bethlehem, and Naomi and Ruth returned from Moab to Bethlehem to live after the death of their husbands. Then Ruth married Boaz, who was from Bethlehem. King David was from Bethlehem, so it is also known as the city of David. Christ was born in Bethlehem as prophesied, and there is a church marking this place today called the Church of the Nativity. The angels appeared to the shepherds watching their flocks by night just outside of Bethlehem. And the wise men, or magi from the east, visited and worshipped Christ here, bringing him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Just before Christ's time, King Herod the Great built a huge fortress called the Herodian that was located just outside of Bethlehem. It was built for King Herod's protection and glory. After Christ's birth, King Herod had all the male children two years and younger murdered here in his attempt to kill Christ. Beth Shemesh is the place where the Philistines returned the Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites, carried upon a wagon miraculously pulled by two female oxen who had no guidance and had just given birth to their calves who were tied up and kept at home. Around the area of Timnah, which was a Philistine town and where Delilah lived, is where Samson began the process of delivering the Israelites from the dominion of the Philistines. The Valley of Elah is where young David slew Goliath. The Israelites were camped on this mountain and the Philistines on the opposite mountain. There was a pasture between the two mountains. David killed Goliath in this pasture you can see here. Later, after David became king of Israel, he built a palace overlooking the area where he killed Goliath as a place to remember and contemplate his faith in God and rise to fame as a result of trusting in God and serving Him with all His heart. Now let's look at the southern section of Israel. Qumran was made up of a group of people called the Essenes. They lived here from about 200 BC to around 68 AD. They were extremely devoted to God and left Jerusalem because they felt the priesthood had become too corrupt. They devoted themselves to seeking God, living a life of purity, copying and studying the manuscripts of the Old Testament. When they saw the nation of Israel falling to the Romans, they hid these manuscripts in various caves above their community overlooking the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 11 caves between the years of 1947 and 1956. In all, there are 973 manuscripts that have been found and are called the greatest manuscript discovery of modern times. These manuscripts make up the same Hebrew Bible that Christ used and are virtually identical to the Old Testament we have today. This verifies that God protected His Word and the Bible we have today is extremely trustworthy. En Gedi is located on the west side of the Dead Sea and is a beautiful oasis fed by a large spring in an extremely dry place in the desert. En Gedi is used in a love poem in the book of Song of Solomon and is referred to in prophecy. En Gedi was one of David's main hideouts when he was fleeing from King Saul. En Gedi is a perfect example of living water in the desert. The Israelites were desert people whose whole history was related to the desert. God uses imagery from the desert to show how those who abandon Him are like a parched desert without water. Christ referred to Himself as living water to show us our need for Him.
Set in the Judean mountains, about 20 miles south of Jerusalem, Hebron stands 3,000 feet above sea level, making it the highest city in Israel. In Hebron is the Cave of the Patriarchs, also known as Machpelah. It's the burial place of three biblical couples, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Leah. The Cave of the Patriarchs is the second holiest site in Judaism, after the Western Wall in Jerusalem. It is also sacred to Christianity and Islam as well. It was the Patriarch Abraham who bought the property when his wife Sarah died almost 2,000 years before Christ was born. It was near Hebron that God made a covenant with Abraham that he would be the ancestor of a multitude of nations and that God would give him the promised land as an inheritance. Abraham had pitched his tent by the Oaks of Mamre as found in Genesis 13, five miles north of Hebron. Here Abraham offered hospitality to three strangers or servant angels of God who told him his wife Sarah, then aged 90, would have a son. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt about 700 years after Abraham, the men he sent to spy out the land of Canaan returned from Hebron with a cluster of grapes so heavy that the two men carried it on a pole between them. King David ruled Judah from Hebron for seven and a half years before moving his capital to Jerusalem after he became king of all Israel. Almost 2,000 years before Christ, God called Abraham from Mesopotamia to live his family and possessions and journey to a new land with the promise that his descendants would become a great nation. Abraham obeyed God and settled in Beersheba and there dug a well for water. Beersheba means well of oath or well of the seven lambs. In Hebrew, the word Sheba means both seven and oath. It was given the name Beersheba due to the oath between Abraham and Abimelech. Isaac's son Jacob stole the birthright from his brother Esau while the family camped at Beersheba as found in Genesis 27. It was from Beersheba that Abraham journeyed with his son Isaac to Mount Moriah in Jerusalem where God had ordered him to sacrifice his son Isaac as a burnt offering as a test to see how much Abraham loved him and was willing to obey. After God saw Abraham's willingness to obey, God provided a ram caught in a thicket for Abraham to sacrifice instead of Isaac. Abraham's example of love for God and obedience caused God to call him our father of faith. Mount Moriah is the exact place that Solomon would build the temple in Jerusalem where countless sacrifices would be made later on. Of these, the most notable being the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Masada is a natural flat mountain that rises up from the valley floor some 1,000 feet. It is like a huge column with sheer cliffs on every side that makes it virtually unreachable. As a consequence of Israel rejecting Christ as their Messiah, Christ foretold that Jerusalem would be destroyed. There were approximately 967 Jewish zealots who had fled from Jerusalem and the surrounding areas. They fled to Masada, conquered it, and lived there. From Jerusalem came the 10th Roman Army Legion under a commander by the name of Silva. The Romans decided to build a siege ramp on the west side of Masada using Israelite slave labor. When the Jewish zealots realized they were going to be conquered, they decided to die by suicide rather than be conquered by the Romans to be abused or killed. So the men gathered in a special meeting and drew lots picking out ten courageous men who knew about killing and understood how to die. Then every father went home and killed their wives and children. Then the ten courageous men killed the fathers, and then one man killed the other nine, and then killed himself. When the Romans saw what had happened, they were shocked and dismayed. 
Masada fell in 73 AD. There is growing evidence that the location of Sodom and Gomorrah is on the southwest side of the Dead Sea. There is a ton of brimstone balls, the old name for sulfur, in these areas and are around 90% pure, unlike most sulfur, which is around 50% pure. It is white, unlike any other place in the world. It is so pure you can light it on fire and it burns a hot blue flame. These sulfur balls are only found in the cities God destroyed. There is also a lot of ash and charcoal in these areas, which fits the biblical narrative. There are many unexplained shapes in these areas that look like buildings, sphinxes, pyramids, and palaces. God says he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes. Having made them an example to those who would live ungodly lives thereafter. The Bible recounts how Abraham looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the valley, and the smoke of the land ascended like the smoke of a furnace. Sodom and Gomorrah is used throughout Scripture as an example of the judgment that awaits those who reject God and his offer of salvation. A little north of the Red Sea, located at Timna Park, is an exact replica of how the tabernacle God instituted the Israelites to build has been built. Every aspect of the replica is to the exact measurement as God instructed. There is the outer court, the inner court called the holy place, and the most inner court called the holy of holies. The outer court contained the brazen altar and the brazen laver. The inner court contained the menorah, the table of showbread, and the altar of incense. The most inner court, or the Holy of Holies, contained the Ark of the Covenant. On top of the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat with two winged cherubim angel figures made from one piece of gold. Inside the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments written by God on stone tablets, Aaron's rod that budded, and a jar of manna. Growing evidence, along with the biblical narrative, reveal that the most likely place the Israelites crossed the Red Sea was on the Gulf of Aqaba, opposite of Saudi Arabia. Much research has led to Nueva as the exact location of the crossing. The bottom of the ocean floor is sandy and gradual, which would have been ideal for the Israelites to have crossed on. There have been found amazing discoveries of chariot wheels, axles, and items that would resemble an army's weapons in this place. And on the opposite side of the Sea of Saudi Arabia, they are found as well. Research over the past 50 years has provided strong evidence that the location of Mount Sinai is in present-day Saudi Arabia near the mountain of Jebel al-Laz. There are remains of an altar Moses erected, the altar Aaron erected to the golden calf he made, paintings of a golden calf, a menorah, Elijah's cave, and more. All this leads to show strong evidence that Mount Sinai is indeed in Saudi Arabia. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and that your faith in God has been strengthened as you've seen that the events that took place in the Bible happened in real places with real people. Our faith in God is based on historical truth, and in order to discredit the Bible, we need to wipe Israel and nearby places off the face of the earth. We have just showed you a little about the amazing things that happened at these holy sites. To learn more about each holy site and other holy sites, please watch more videos on our YouTube channel or website.